going live. Welcome back, and we have our latest update with Chris Harris. So we'll be giving us a quick update today. Just give the highlights. Storage of highly contaminated waste still an issue at Fukushima. Uh, Chris is going to give us an update on that. Japanese government set to end nuclear power entirely within two decades. Gosh. Uh, then we have a report debris landing on Alaskan shores quadruples over last year. Quadruples, we're talking about large docks, ships, all kinds of garbage showing up there. And Three Mile Island, uh, one unit uh, shuts down due to reactor coolant leak. I said before, 100% of all reactors release tritium. Nine major reactors, we talked about this last week with Chris, uh, have problems with either temperature control outside the reactor so they, can, they don't have control, had difficulty with major leaks of tritium, or other station blackout issues that are not being dealt with, uh, and, and uh, backup power systems. The nuclear industry is working with too sharp a pencil, and the operation of the frontal lobes of these so-called engineers is working for the industry. Now that they've shut down Jazco, the previous director of the NRC, we're getting almost nothing positive coming out of the NRC saying that, oh my gosh, we've got to deal with extreme weather. Across America, we had extreme weather all summer, drought, extreme storms are going to be coming this fall and winter. We're not prepared for station shutdowns. We're not prepared for major leaks like the uh, Three Mile Island leak that's sitting literally. Uh, that Three Mile Island leak is, you know, remembers the old Three Mile Island re- release or the uh, big reactor sitting outside New York City that uh, is sitting literally on fault lines. So, Chris, give us the update on all these issues. What's going on in Fukushima? Because I'm seeing my radiation detector starting to fluctuate again, which tells me, as you said before the show, that it's the 61st release, which means what they do is after a period of time they decide, well, we've filtered as much as we can. We're just going to release it to nature. So they release it to the Pacific Ocean and the troposphere, which blows it eastward toward North America and around the Northern Hemisphere. Well, one of the processes is that it's an evaporative process, and so that um, I've been looking into what they're actually doing, and a lot of the a lot of the treatment comes from taking this highly contaminated water, you know, with the 10 to the 5th decorels per, you know, a cubic centimeter or so. And they're, you know, one of the things you do is you evaporate out of much of the water. What you're trying to do is you're trying to capture all the worst possible stuff. And then you, then you filter that out. And whatever's left over, you know, whatever's, whatever's clean enough to release, yeah, you, you can go ahead and do that because it's not detectable. But you've also released a lot of stuff atmospherically, so you're probably seeing some of that. Also, it gets pumped back into the reactor. What, whatever is not clean enough to release gets pumped back into the because it still needs cooling. You know, like units one through three still need cooling. And uh, there's a lot of water accumulated in the basement. There's a lot of it that's just where it's coming from. And, uh, well, how did it get to the basement of that and the turbine building? Now, I've heard people say, well, you know, it's not, um, you know, it, the, the disaster wasn't so horrific because, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of tsunami waters. Well, then how come there's so much, how come the water in the turbine building is so highly contaminated? You shouldn't see very much in, in there at all. And that's where you're seeing, uh, that's where they're taking suction on from some of these, uh, from the filter yeah. trains. So the, the end product of this is the stuff that you can't yeah. possibly do anything with. Yeah. It's, it's called sludge. And you've got yourself of over 150,000 gallons of this stuff called sludge. I don't know how you ever, ever are going to even move this stuff. But you don't want it to go anywhere, and you want to protect it so it doesn't leak into the ocean or any, anywhere, for heaven's sake. This is the right. worst. Right. When you say doesn't leak, you're talking about 100,000 years, right? Uh, for as long as... Yeah, that that sounds about right. I mean, I don't know know what to do with it. I wouldn't know how to even move such a, you know, such a mess. It's really a well. What they need to do is they need to turn the the solid waste. Uh, sort of into a solid waste, and they need to transport it in proper uh, trains or ships that can carry it to a deep tin mine well below the water line that will stay there for billions of years. The problem is nobody's had an international consortium to put the money in to properly, number one, filter this instead of, quote, releasing it into the, into the oceans. They know if they put ground-penetrating radar or put mini-subs out there, they'd see that these steam jets were releasing it into the ocean floor. They even talked about putting concrete for hundreds of square miles off the coast of Fukushima Daiichi to literally seal the radioactive steam jets that are in the ocean floor coming from the Daiichi plant. Uh, what have they done in that regard? Have they done anything there? Uh, well, they are trying to 
prevent the intrusion of groundwater by diverting some of it. Listen, we talked about this like oh, like a year ago. Like right. One thing you've got to do is you've got to go ahead and try to somehow keep the rainwater out. And if you read that PDF that I sent you just, just today, and it was just the, what today's PDF, they're right. getting a, a terrible problem with intrusion from groundwater and intrusion from rainwater, which goes in clean and it comes out contaminated. So, right. you know... Uh, like, I don't come on here to say anything that's uh, you know, just to be dramatic and everything else. It's, uh, that, no, it's all, that, it's all in, the, in the solid documents. What about the, uh, the this article about the nuclear power going to end in two decades? I thought most of the plants were already turned off. Are they actually crazy enough to turn them back on again? Uh, well, crazy or otherwise, uh, they are doing inspections at at least uh, two of them. There's a pretty aggressive schedule for them. They're doing actual walk-downs to see what kind of damage from last year's earthquake, and they will they will make an assessment whether it's uh, feasible to go ahead and restart that, and that's even in today's those reports. Uh, Chris, so, uh, before, before I forget, I, I want to ask, exactly why in the world would they build the the, uh, the the nuclear reactors right by the ocean? I mean, there's no reason to build them on the beach next to the beach, next to the ocean, is there? They want to have access to water is what they they do that. But again, it's like the, uh, I call pre-crime, just like Minority reported on you, this is a nuclear pre-crime. But, but there's earthquake zones everywhere. They, they've had tsunamis for millennia uh, in, in Japan. I don't, I don't really know. It defies logic. They, they can even... Uh, they can even do topography. They can use geothermal energy and replace all their need for nuclear reactors and even their need for fossil fuels, they call them. Oh, they aren't. They're fossil. They're abiotic. Uh, Nuclear-generated fuels from the bowels of the nuclear reactor we call Earth. Um, then the, other, the last report, of course, is uh, debris landing on Alaskan shores. Um, is, this, is any of this debris showing up radioactive, or what, what's the, what is Alaska doing about it? I know reports that are showing up radioactive, but I do know that if it's making its way across across the ocean, then anything that any currents that are radioactive would also, by by, necess, by necessity, would also be showing up there too. So that's really indicative of the way the currents are flowing, and if they are coming to the west coast and it's all up and down. We're talking about within a couple of days there were tons. First, there was nothing on that beach. Right. Uh, I forgot where it was. I think it was Washington State. Oh, Alaska, excuse me. And uh, two days later, there were tons of debris, mostly foam, things like that come off of docks, you know, that, that help. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, plastic and foam and, uh, and and other d- dock debris, yeah, marine debris. Yeah, uh, and it's, and it's really just, you know, just to say, you know, well... I, I want you to stay there uh, for, for a moment, uh, if you can, Chris, because we want to get into another nuclear release that's going to happen here shortly. We're calling it another pre-crime. We've got the impending nuclear attack with special forces on Syria and Iran and the Bashir reactor. Now, you know the Bashir reactor is probably one of the largest reactor sites on the planet. It's been estimated by the, the uh, scientists and, and doctors for social responsibility that if they hit that reactor while well, fully fueled and in full operation, which it is now, manned by Russian scientists and technicians, the radiation release will be monumental. It'll be far bigger than Chernobyl or even the release from Fukushima. Um, what, uh, what, what do you see, uh, Chris, as a danger if they start a nuclear war in the Middle East, basically? Just what you said. Please do not strike any facility that has any enriched uranium in it because just you know, just as you said it's going to cause a release that it's well, first of all you know it's big or bigger or big s i don't think there's any way to measure it right now how much yeah, how much yeah. we, by know, the way there's a there's well, an ancient Demona will be hit by the syrians and the iranians and hezbollah and Demona is a thermal nuclear weapons manufacturing facility as well as a nuclear reactor. Yeah, uh, I've heard estimates that they have a right around 800 multiple targeted missiles underground at Demona. Uh, and a weapons facility that's literally second to none in America, Russia, uh, for making nuclear weapons in Israel. So, well, they use laser enrichment. Yeah, I know. They're very advanced. And unfortunately, they got a lot of bad stuff down there. Very- 
Welcome back. And uh, when you hear about Obamacare, we talked about that with Daniel Weber in the first hour with AMAC, AMAC.us. When you listen to Tim, you go to his daily blog, europebusiness.blogspot.com, or just Google Lord Sterling, S-T-I-R-L-I-N-G. When you look at the reports we post up that are actually from published NRC reports, nuclear reports, and journalism by Chris Harris, and inside analysis, things are, it's like the movie network. Things are worse than bad. Uh, but again, the glimmer is, number one, if you're a believer, you know that no matter that we're inside a fire pot, literally burning the, the bricks of ancient Babylon seven times hotter than it needs to be to burn bricks, that the fourth man, the Most High God, is with us. And what people need to do is to start, number one, realizing prayer is good, but prayer with action is better. Which means you got to get out there and make sure you vote. Number one, we cannot have a second term of Obama, no matter what. Number two, we need to start taking legal action on things like smart meters. We need to tell our politicians we don't want war. We're going to realize when they come back from the recess, we need to tell our congressmen and senators, restrain this maniac. He needs to be impeached right now because he's literally giving a green light to the Israelis. And only a tiny minority, the majority of Israelis, have enough sense to realize this is suicidal and stupid. The Russians and Chinese are begging us, let's not start this. The, uh, the, even inside Israel, so now the latest move you said, uh, Tim, is that they're trying to convince the British, the Americans, and the French that those crazy generals, that they need to proceed with their elite forces to well, come they, and, quote, they, grab they the weapons. almost killed the, Amer- the, the top American general yesterday. And uh, if you believe that it was simply some ragheads uh, that got lucky and threw a $2 billion security system, uh, I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. Uh, right. he, he, he went into Israel. He told Israel that the, uh, that the military elite, that the, the, the generals in America were not going to go along with Netanyahu's drive towards uh, a global war. And Netanyahu, no doubt, uh, tried to have him killed. Uh, that's what this article says. It makes sense to me. Uh, and they missed, barely. And uh, so we're, we're at the point, three weeks ago, the Israeli generals put their feet, uh, their foot down and said no to war. Uh, now they've, they've rewrote the script, so it's the U.S., U.K., and France uh, units are on standby. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, unless the generals say no, uh, the people at the top in the uh, France, in, in the United Kingdom, and the United States are going to take us into a horrific nightmare that is beyond what most people can even begin to understand because they don't understand the military technology. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you know, if they hit the Mona, uh, if they hit the, the uh, Bashir reactor, etc., that alone will make Fukushima look like a Sunday school romp. And, uh, I mean, and it, it's going to be far worse than that. They're going to close the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, forget about gasoline. It might cost 15 a gallon. It might cost 20 a gallon. Forget about the economy. Forget about eating. Well, that's why I tell people that they need to get themselves or prepare wise food. They need to have water stored for their home for at least three weeks. <clears throat> they need to be prepared with self defense. They need to start networking with their neighbors so they can share skill sets and, and start practicing. You don't need to quote a formal militia, but people need to be prepared right now because whether it's in America, Canada, or other nations, things are gonna the wheels are gonna come off this. And when I hear people like Joel Skousen say after all his preparedness books and so on, oh there isn't an end to this economically uh, January, which is only a few months away, the fiscal cliff has been published by the General Accounting Office. We have a report that just came out today on that. We have issues in the Middle East. We've got issues in Europe. We have the uh, number of state and, and other governments that are going bankrupt. And yet these idiots are pushing all the wrong buttons. They're saying rather than increasing credit and letting house mortgage rates float down to a lower price and allow people to keep their equity, instead of giving money to, to small business to make more jobs, what we have is the government's planning on a major tax increase. And we have a little help, hope here now that we have Paul Ryan coming in with his uh, plan for budgets that will actually get some rationality that would may bring some common sense back. But it's a it's a little late. If we get another term well, of Obama, I mean, you, have, you have a madman at a wheel of a of a bus loaded with people, 
and instead of and he's headed towards a cliff, and instead of turning the wheel and hitting the brake, he's heading straight ahead, and he puts the pedal to the metal, and uh, you know he's uh, he's screaming something which makes no sense, and uh, uh, it, it, look, we're going to be in a situation whether this is the the final war, the final battle, or not, whether that's down the road or whether it's it starts soon. I think it's going to be so bad we're all going to talk about before the war and after the war. It will be that profound of an well, event. So I think the war started on September 11th and the 11th well, anniversary is, is coming I'm up. I'm talking about uh, uh, this next phase. Oh, the next phase, yeah. This next phase is going to get very, very ugly. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, that it may well happen uh, if Obama thinks that the election is going to go to the Republicans because of Ryan now, he's going to green light an early attack to have well, a September surprise. You know, I've also, you know, he, the, I've been told that they found uh, a document that, that proves uh, Obama entered uh, Occidental uh, University as a foreign national. Yeah, I, uh, I think that it's very possible. I, I don't know that, that he'll be I signed. haven't seen it yet. I'm supposed to. I, yeah, I've talked to the, uh, the, to the media person for Professor Corsi and others who was uh, sure for Pio just in the last few days, and I can tell you that uh, if these documents see the light of day in the regular media and the courts decide to proceed, Obama is sunk and his entire regime is over. Well, he, he could be out of office. You, the vice president would have to take over. Literally. Yeah, but it's, Joe Biden is a joke. Profound. Joe Biden, we, we, we should call him, you know, uh, you know, incompetent jo, uh, you know, Joe Biden. I mean, no, one time calling he, him President Biden. Yeah, but President That's Biden. Well, yeah. President Biden, <laughs> during, though. During World War III, President Biden, you know, and he can't, he can't. He I can't don't think he'll that. be around for long. I think he'll be swept out of office here by the next election. Well, uh, uh, the point, uh, but the point I was going to make about that is, if Obama uh, literally is that close to being uh, everything coming out, he may definitely choose to uh, to ignite the fuse because uh, that's what I think is. That's why I think if you're saying if what you're saying is true, which I think it is, and uh, the Israelis are doing this with these special forces elite units, I think they want to do something before the election. It maybe just scare the hell out of us so they can have a great distraction, so they can have a quote war president sitting in the White House and don't change horses in the middle of a war uh, kind of philosophy, so you don't get rid of Obama. But a second term of Obama will look like the first term of Vladimir Lenin. Well, yeah, Obama actually has a plan to basically denude the United States unilaterally of, of almost all of its nuclear weapons. Gee, that would be brilliant. Oh, boy. How, what it would guarantee to make sure that other nations attack you is to take down all your weapons. How crazy is that? You know, uh, <laughs> uh, no, that's beyond crazy. That gives crazy a bad, <laughs> a bad rep. <laughs> That's way beyond crazy. Yeah, that's that's really crazy. Yeah. Well, again, remember I mentioned that Obama. That we had a nuclear uh, scientist on us three years ago who stated that in the early nineties, after Glasnost and Perestroika, he was told the future president would be Obama. That he was a Russian agent and that he would be our next, uh, our future president at some future time. And and how do you know this? He says because he's one of us. The uh, Russian uh, nuclear physicist said. Well, could be. All they said his name is, specifically. He told Barack Obama. I, I, I have heard that story. I have heard that story. I talked to the nuclear expert myself, and I got the corroborating documents to show that it was true. So Obama, Barack Obama spent a lot of time go traveling to Afghanistan with the CIA. He's from a spook family. There are probably many of them double agents. Remember, there's interlocking. Communism is just a manufactured entity by the global banks. Communism was a tool by the, it was a tool by the global banks. The Rothschilds, the Warburgs, the Chefs, etc. Right. Uh, and and it was a, a a way to concentrate power and wealth in their hands. Exactly. And they were also behind uh, Hitler. Yeah. Uh, I mean, these are people. They want war. They organize things. War is a great. Uh, system for them to increase their wealth and their power and to reorganize society in ways that they want to. And don't forget the ultimate, uh, they serve not God, but Satan, and Satan wants the blood orgy, which is what we call war. By the way, get your uh, Neutrodyne, Alamax, Alamed, and, and uh, Immunomax because... West Nile virus is four times normal. We have an explosion of H5, H3N2V 
pandemic flu, and as the population gets weaker from all the stress and radiation from Fukushima, this is the year you're going to start seeing some major excursions of the flu. And uh, as a population, if we have major releases of radiation, you're going to have a massive explosion of illness. Then get right with God. That's the first thing. Get prepared. If you think we're exaggerating, don't wait any longer to I try to check we it were. out. I wish we were. I wish we were too. I really don't like all this bad news. But if you get prepared, you're right with God. God will be there with you to get you better.